Good morning. It's Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Staying on Track, and our scripture is Psalm 119. My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Your instructions are more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver. Let's face it, there are times when God the Father takes his children to the woodshed. We tend to think of Father in terms of our protector, provider, and closest friend, and rightly so. But there's more to parenting than planning birthday parties, outings to the state fair, and putting bread on the table. If discipline is never on that table, you wind up with an undisciplined, immature, unmannered, and unprincipled child in adult skin. Repeat that enough, and you have a culture that respects nothing, demands everything, and sits in a pool of tears because they don't get what they wanted. Uh, you have 2020. I received discipline as a child. It wasn't so much physical discipline, although there were those times. But Mom and Dad's choice of discipline warned me about the consequences that went along with my choices. And when the choices I made fell in the unwise or downright rebellious column, the consequences were no surprise. It was, as the name of this devotional blog suggests, a rocky road out there. And so, Russell, here are the good ways to avoid those rocky places. And when you can't help but go through them, here's how to ask for the right kind of help to navigate life's tougher pathways. No discipline, physical, mental, financial, or even the imprisonment of time out, is welcomed at the time. But often we can look back and see the value the discipline has had in helping form our future choices, helping us stay on track. One such time for me was a watershed of life's choices that placed me on the right track with God. As a young man, I was busy with young children to raise, a wife that loved me, and a good job. Yeah, the chores of taking care of a house, two cars, and a sordid schedule management, my life was full. It was full of busy days, doing things, making money, going here and there, and totally empty of purpose. Our lives had taken an upswing in direction, being newly welcomed into a loving church where Scripture was held in high regard, modeled by leaders who understood what the Apostle James meant about living the Word, not just hearing it. But there was still some piece of this puzzle of how to do something with my life that would match a growing hunger to please God. Looking back on that time, aided with the benefit of 40 years of hindsight, I can see it was God, the Holy Spirit, who was reminding me of God's call to preach. It was a calling I'd received and tried my best to ignore so long ago as a boy. But at the time, it just seemed like a gnawing emptiness in the pit of my stomach. It was a sense that if I didn't do something about serving God, I would somehow dry up on the inside and melt into the landscape like dried leaves blow away from the life-giving tree each fall. It wasn't as much selfishness or rebellion toward my Creator as it may have been a lack of understanding or confidence, the kind of faith in God to take that first step as when God wanted Abraham to go to the mountain. I was being tested, and in fear I had been running from God. I was off track, and it was painful to feel so alienated from God's loving presence. That alienation is what we would commonly call the woodshed, God's way of getting our attention so he can steer us back on track to a life planned for us that's less about him being sovereign and much more about him wanting the best for his children, even us stubborn ones. For me, hopping back on the right track took nearly 20 years from the time of my calling until the day I finally put my pride and insecurity aside and, in a broken, halting prayer of that day, told God I was His. I would do whatever He wanted, wherever He wanted me to do it, and with whatever He placed in my hands. I would follow Him. I was His. There have been bumps along the way. It's still a rocky road, remember. 
but the growing sense of peace in my soul has met each stone or boulder with just the right amount of faith for each day. That's what the right track feels like when you let God steer the engine. For you today. So, is it just suffering, or is it suffering that's good for you? Is God showing you where you jumped the track? It's not too late to get back on if you're still breathing. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.